Let's break down three running backs and three wide receivers who have some sneaky upside moving into week five of the 2024 fantasy football season. Maybe these players are out there on the waiver wire. Maybe they are on your bench. Either way, with bye weeks this week and a mound of injuries to start this season, you may want to consider starting one of these players as we approach the week. We're going to kick the video off with Denver Broncos running back Javante Williams. And yes, this Denver Broncos offense has been more than difficult to trust so far on the season. And uh, overall, the backfield has been very difficult to trust. Jaleel McLaughlin has been involved a little bit throughout the season. He did have nine touches last week. Compare that to Javante Williams, 16 touches. Javante at the moment is the lead back, but he's been very inconsistent in fantasy football. 3.3 points in week one, 11.5 in week two, 6.1 in week three, 10 fantasy points in week four against the Jets. But what was nice to see out of Javante in week four was, you know, in that previous double digit performance against Pittsburgh in week two, he had five targets and five receptions. In week four, just three targets, two receptions for a total of three receiving yards, where in week two, he had 48 receiving yards. He got a bulk of these fantasy points actually by running the football. Mind blowing, right? Those 16 touches accounted for 77 total rushing yards, 4.81 yards per carry. And we look at the uh, Raiders defense on the season. This run defense has been God awful, giving up the uh, 25th most fantasy points to the running back position so far on the season. We look back to the past four weeks in week one, 176 rushing yards to the Chargers in week two, 151 rushing yards to the Ravens in week three, 131 rushing yards to the Panthers. And last week in week four, 92 rushing yards to the Browns. So we know that this Raiders defense is going to give up rushing yards. This is a home game for the Broncos. And Javante, I think, is the clear-cut running back here, even if that's been difficult to trust. We did see Tyler Batty go down with that you know, uh, neck injury or back injury, excuse me. He's probably headed towards IR. He did get you know a fair amount of touches, nine touches in week three, but no longer a factor. So going into week five, we've really got McLaughlin and Javante Williams, and that is it. And McLaughlin, sure, could get involved, I guess. Who knows what we're going to get out of the Broncos on a weekly basis at this point if they're only throwing for 60 passing yards in a game. But this is a good home opportunity. Javante, one of those guys who I think can bring you double-digit fantasy points this week. Maybe the upside's not crazy. I do think there's definitely potential. He could score his first touchdown of the season in this matchup. But if he's sitting on your bench, you're dealing with the bye weeks or some of these other injuries starting to kind of mound up towards the end of the week, like Brian Robinson, for example, the Washington Commanders. Javante, I do think, will be a solid play moving into week five. Currently, Javante Williams' line on underdog is sitting at 51 and a half rushing yards. I would head straight over to underdog and hit the over on that line. If you guys are new to Underdog Fantasy, Underdog is giving all new customers who sign up with promo code the catch a free pick em for this weekend. Dak Prescott over half of a total yard. Take that free pick em, take the over on Javante Williams rushing yards, and automatically triple your cash entry. And on top of that, Underdog is going to give you a 50% deposit match up to $1,000 when you sign up with promo code the catch catch that link is down below and next up is justice hill of the baltimore ravens who's kind of been one of these guys who's been added since week one then dropped and then now going into week five has shot back up to 50 percent rostered overall and i've talked about this since week one right like what we're looking for with justice hill is a positive game script or i mean maybe i guess you could argue a negative game script where the ravens need to throw the football and that's going to result in targets and receptions for Justice Hill. Eight targets in week one, six receptions, just four targets and four receptions combined in weeks two and three. But in week four, we didn't really have a negative game script. We had the Bills just absolutely surrendering to the Ravens and Justice Hill, six targets, six receptions, 78 receiving yards, took one of those to the house for a touchdown and his highest fantasy point total of 21.6. 
This week, the Ravens are on the road against the Bengals. I think this is another nice opportunity for Justice Hill to be a viable starter for your fantasy roster. If you're kind of in a desperate play area, I do think he has some sneaky upside in this matchup. You know, the Bengals, not a good defense against the running back position. Kind of difficult to evaluate that for Justice Hill, though, because once again, we're not really looking at him like as a true running back here. You know, he's not going to get us fantasy points based of, off of what he does on the ground because Derrick Henry is going to do that, right? But I do think this game script in, you know, what's the first divisional matchup for the Ravens on the season could benefit Justice Hill. I think that, you know, while the Ravens defense played much, much better in week four, they've still been pretty loose overall on the season. They weren't great against Kansas City in week one. They were not good in week two against the Raiders, and they were not good in week three against the Cowboys. So I think we're going to actually see some fireworks out of the Bengals offense, and that's going to push for Justice Hill to be more involved. The other thing that I like about Justice Hill overall is really when we break down this Ravens roster right now, he is like truly the wide receiver two on this team. It's like Zay Flowers, Justice Hill, and then some combination of Isaiah Likely, Mark Andrews, Rashad Bateman, and Nelson Aguilar. But right now on the season, we literally have 18 targets to Justice Hill. We look at Rashad Bateman on the season, we have 14. We look at Nelson Aguilar, we have eight targets. Then we look at the tight ends. Mark Andrews has nine targets and Isaiah likely is tied with Justice Hill for uh, 18 targets. So literally (laughs) he is like the wide receiver two on this team. Zay Flowers has 27 targets in case you're wondering. So, you know, the volume, I guess, through the air is still there for Justice Hill. The issue is that until an opposing defense slows down the Ravens run game, they're going to keep running the football with Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson. But I think here in week five, we're going to see some more continued upside for Justice Hill. He could be a sneaky start if you need to play him. And last running back I'm going to mention is Cam Akers of the Houston Texans. This is the third week in a row where I've talked about Cam Akers. In the last two weeks have not been great. I understand it. And yes, this is dependent on if Joe Mixon plays or not. But he, at the time recording this, he did not practice today. He did not practice on Thursday. So, I mean, Joe Mixon is the type of player who could not practice all week and then be activated Sunday because, you know, we still know what he brings to the table. Texans know what he brings to the table. And I get it, guys. It, it, I get what we've gotten out of Cam Akers the last few weeks. A shout out to Sean Cately, 4411, left a comment on one of the videos last week. And, uh, you know, these are the type of comments that make me think, well, maybe I should be a little bit more concerned about a player of Cam Akers caliber because this basically came true when Akers had just 5.3 fantasy points against the Jaguars, who are a bottom five uh, defense against the running back position in fantasy football. But this... Buffalo Bills defense. And I get it. This was my whole thesis last week. Like, yeah, pick up Cam Akers, start him. He's playing the Jaguars. He only had 53 yards on the ground. Off of 13 touches, not too bad, but it's 5.3 fantasy points and uh, no touchdowns on the day, right? But look at this Bills defense over the last four weeks against the run. They have been abysmal. 20, 124 rushing yards in week one against the Cardinals, 139 rushing yards in week two against the Dolphins, 92 rushing yards in week three against the Jags. Then this past week, 271 rushing yards in total to the Baltimore Ravens. I'm expecting a game script with points, a competitive game script here in week five between the Bills and the Texans. The Texans are at home. The Bills are allowing the second most fantasy points to the running back position. This is the last time I will involve Cam Akers in one of our videos if he's awful this week, if he's a bust, but he's sitting at just 28% rostered. If Mixon does not play and you need a last minute start, a sneaky start, I truly think Cam Akers could be that guy as we approach week five. All right, first wide receiver we're going to mention is Alan Lazard of the New York Jets. This will be an interesting matchup between the Jets and the Vikings. We have two defenses overall that are good defenses, but this Vikings secondary has really, really start started to tear down a bit. 
we look at what they've done, you know, just 186 passing yards allowed in week one. Then we look at the last three weeks, right? 319 passing yards allowed in week two from the Niners, 307 passing yards allowed by the Texans in week three. Then last week against the Packers, 389 passing yards allowed. In the last four games, the Vikings have allowed the most passing yards by their opponent overall in the entire NFL. The secondary is the weakest part of what's been a good defense so far on the season. Alan Lazard, on the other hand, excuse me, is a wide receiver 17 in fantasy football. Like, no, that's not fantastic, but he's a top 20 wide receiver in fantasy football. You start to dig through a couple of names here. I mean, he has more fantasy points than DJ Moore. He has more fantasy points than Michael Pittman. He has more fantasy points than Zay Flowers. He has more fantasy points than Amari Cooper. I mean, these are guys who were drafted far ahead of him. Even wide receivers like Terry McLaurin. He still has more fantasy points than Terry McLaurin, who's been humming in the last two weeks. So Alan Lazard is a player who certainly doesn't feel super great when we're throwing him into our starting lineups, but 26.9 fantasy points, a bomb in week two at 3.1, 13.8 in week three, 10.8 in week four. I do think when we get these London games, right, uh, defense can tend to go out the window. Sometimes offense goes out the window, but I got a feeling in this matchup between the Jets and the Vikings, we're going to see some points scored. And while Lazard does have three touchdowns on the season, he still got you double digits last week against the Broncos uh, without scoring a touchdown. So I think he's a safe bet. He sits at 48% rostered. He is a guy who's rostered in a lot of leagues. If you're sitting on your bench, you feel like having a safe flex option this week. I think Alan Lazard is a safe flex option who's got some sneaky upside against this Vikings defense and could pop off in week five. Let's move along to Tutu Atwell of the Rams has quietly hit double digit fantasy points in the last two weeks in each of his matchups. And he gets a good matchup this week against the Green Bay Packers who, you know, last four games overall in the season have been very poor against the wide receiver position, allowing the 26 most fantasy points to the wide receiver position. Look at their last four games, 278 passing yards allowed in week one, 204 allowed in week two, 260 allowed in week three, 275 passing yards allowed last week against the Vikings. Now, Jerry Alexander was, uh, you know, inactive last week. He uh, could play this week. That might change things. The secondary has still done a good job of taking away the football, getting some interceptions, but they're still giving up a fair amount of fantasy points to the wide receiver position as displayed, right? And, you know, we don't really have a true wide receiver one for the Rams right now. Jordan Whittington's out there. Uh, Tyler Johnson's out there. Demarcus Robinson uh, practiced today, but may or may not play this week. But I don't think that Tutu Atwell is going to be lining up as a wide receiver one anyways, which benefits him if G. Alexander is out there. It's a corner matchup that we want to stay away from. But like I said, Tutu Atwell is just kind of making these big plays at least once a game. That results in a double-digit fantasy performance. This is a home game for the Rams, and this is also a good matchup for uh, Matthew Stafford at the quarterback position. You know, the Rams, or excuse me, uh, the Packers are kind of right middle of the pack in terms of fantasy points allowed to the quarterback position. So, you know, Matthew Stafford's been awful basically since Puka and Cup have gone down. But I think as the weeks have continued to progress, you know, we definitely could put together a thesis that. This offense, what they have out there, can continue to mesh, get better in the passing game. I think this is a nice spot um, for the Rams at home to potentially have a better offensive day. I mean, can't really be much worse than what we've seen the last two weeks out of the Rams. With the point being, we have 12.2 fantasy points in week four for 2-2, 13.3 two, in week three. He's had 20.5 yards per catch or more. He's only had four receptions in each of the last two games but he's making the most out of those receptions and coming up with some big plays. So Tutu sitting at 27% rostered has been one of those players that's been kind of picked up drop. Like you don't trust him. I get it. If you need someone to plug in and play this week, he's got some sneaky upside moving into week five. All right, last but not least, let's talk about Trey Tucker of the Las Vegas Raiders. This is a bad matchup. I'm not going to lie, but you know, I don't want to put all good matchups on here and just say that's, you know, part of the reason why, but it is part of the reason why. The Broncos allowing the third fewest fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. Okay, 
We know Devontae Adams is not going to play, right? Hamstring issue, wants to be traded, whatever it is. And Jacoby Myers is going to line up as the wide receiver one. He's going to get the Pat Sertain treatment. Please, God, no matter what format you're in, don't start Jacoby Myers this week. But I think that's going to allow for Trey Tucker to have the you know potential to have some big plays in this game. Maybe nothing crazy. But this is going to be a game where I expect the Raiders are going to need to throw the football. Might not be the highest scoring game, but I, I do think that the Broncos are going to actually potentially outplay the Raiders in this matchup. So I think that Trey Tucker will be heavily involved. He has six targets in week four, nine targets in week three, 15.4 or more fantasy points in the last two games. He didn't top more than 4.2 fantasy points in the first two games of the season, and he's still averaging 11.4 fantasy points. Uh, so far on the season per game. So I like Trey Tucker also because, you know, they find ways to get him the football outside of the passing game. We saw him score that rushing touchdown in week four. So, you know, he doesn't necessarily have to play great as a wide receiver. The Raiders, especially where they're, you know, they've kind of been downgraded over all here with no Devontae Adams, will find unique ways potentially to get Trey Tucker the ball this week. So, you know, I know he's been like a popular waiver wire ad in the last two weeks, but then I think, you know, fantasy managers looking at this matchup against the Broncos, then in week six against the Steelers, and I maybe backed off a little bit. I still think Trey Tucker in this matchup has some nice upside, could be a sneaky play, and still sits a little bit lower rostered overall than I thought he might be. He's probably end up gonna he's probably going to end up making tomorrow's video for last minute waiver wire ads sitting at just 32% rostered, especially because we're expecting Devontae Adams to depart from this team. And there are some nice matchups like week seven against the Rams coming up for the Raiders. So if you're absolutely desperate, I really do think Trey Tucker is a sneaky play moving into week five. That'll do it for today's video. Guys, don't forget I'm answering all fantasy football questions in the comment section down below. If you guys need anything whatsoever as we approach week five of the season, please let me know down below, and I'll get back to every single comment on this video. Don't forget, we've got everything on the channel that you guys could possibly need for week five of the fantasy season. Start sits at every position for every single matchup going through every single player. Must start defenses, must start kickers, players you cannot bench this week by low targets. Live fantasy Q&A streams throughout the week. Everything that you guys could possibly need to bring home a victory this week week. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss out on any content. And with that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. And remember, you saw it here on The Catch.